Hello biologists, this is Miss R and we're going to be talking about mitosis, cell differentiation, and cell specialization for quiz 3.22, 3.25, and 3.27. Let's start out by talking about mitosis. Mitosis is the process in which a cell splits up its chromosomes in the nucleus, splits up the nucleus so that there are two perfect copies of that nucleus. It's part of, mitosis is part of the cell cycle. And most of the cell cycle is spent in inner phase, and we'll check that out in a little bit. But mitosis is at the end, towards the end of the cell cycle, and it has four steps. You can think of it as PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. That's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, PMAT. See if you can remember them. P is for prophase, M is for metaphase, A is for anaphase, and T is for telophase, PMAT. After mitosis comes cytokinesis. The cell membrane squeezes together and pinches into two cells. You can see that right here. One cell is becoming two after mitosis. Here it is in a plant cell. There's a cell wall being built right here. It happens a little bit differently in plants because they have a cell wall. A plate forms instead of a squeeze. What is this process called when the cell membrane squeezes and pinches together into two cells? Well, cytokinesis stands for cell movement. So that movement into two different cells is called cytokinesis. How do you split up the nucleus of the cell to get two exact copies? That process is called mitosis, and that's the PMAT. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase happen. It splits up the nucleus, and you get two exact copies. Here you can see what's going on in mitosis. There's prophase, where you can just see the chromosomes. Meta phase where they line up in the middle, remember meta means middle. Anaphase where they're pulled to opposite ends. Telophase where the cell is starting to split off and cytokinesis where you've got two different cells. Remember, most of the cell cycle is interphase, and interphase is when the chromosomes get copied right here in the S phase, the organelles get copied in the G1 phase, and mitosis happens towards the end, and then cytokinesis happens right here, and then those cells enter the cell cycle again. Mitosis makes new cells, but if you want new organisms, you need reproduction. And reproduction is a more complex process and it involves something called meiosis, but we're going to study that in a different video. If you want to make more baby animals, not just more cells, if you want to make a new organism, you need a process called reproduction. So let's think about how cells are very different from each other. This is related to quiz 3.22. Excuse me, this is related to 3.25. So what we just talked about, mitosis, is 3.22. This is 3.25. Organisms have lots of different specialized cells, and all these organisms look kind of the same when they start out. Um, I have on the next slide different embryos that represent dolphins and dogs and a turtle and a chicken and a human. And it's very difficult to tell which embryo is which because we all have exactly the same kind of DNA. Well, not exactly, but almost exactly the same kind of DNA. 99 over 90% of our DNA is the same with these organisms. Each of these similar embryos develop in, into very different organisms because of the way genes are expressed. And since every cell in an organism has exactly 
the same DNA. Every cell in your body has exactly the same DNA except for your red blood cells and some of your sex cells. Cell differentiation when you were a zygote made all of your cells look very different. All of the cells in an embryo here developed into your heart cells, your nervous system, and your immune system. So cell specialization is very important in creating the different kinds of cells we need to be a multicellular organism with specialized cells. Cell differentiation is the process by which cells change and specialize. Does this happen in an embryo, in an adult, during mitosis, during cytokinesis, or you don't know? Well, if you guessed in an embryo, you're correct. Because as we saw right here, this embryo has to form specialized cells that form all the different parts of a human organism. Here we have the zygote and all these different kinds of cells, red blood cells, smooth muscle cells, fat cells, intestinal epithelial cells, striated and muscle cells, bone tissue, and loose connective tissue, and uh, very importantly, nerve cells, all come from one cell when you started out. So first you have that zygote, that egg and sperm together, then you have stem cells, and then they differentiate. What does this process describe? Making specialized cells, making cookies, mitosis, homeostasis, or you don't know. If you guess making specialized cells, you're correct. So the big ideas are cells that have different jobs. Different jobs need different tools. So even though all your cells have the same DNA, different genes, different parts of the DNA get expressed to provide different tools for the different specialized cells. And cells are going to look very different depending on what their function is. We go back to that structure function idea we've been talking about for a while now in biology. Heart cells are going to look very different from eye cells, which look very different from nose cells. They, need, they perform different jobs, so they need different structures. And here are your skin cells. These might be on your nose. There's lots of even different types of skin cells because skin has to do lots of different jobs. Here are some cells in your eye. You can see this is a photoreceptor here. There's some, a, la a layer of cells behind that, and then there are even more different kinds of cells behind that. So even though your eye, you think, only does one job, it has lots of different kinds of cells even to do that one job. Here's a plant. Here's a leaf cell or a leaf, and there are lots of different kinds of cell in a leaf as well. Plants need specialized cells as well. If you plant a seed, all the plant cells would perform exactly the same function if what did not happen. What needs to happen so all those different, different cells can do different work in a plant? And if you guess cell differentiation, you're correct. Different proteins mean we have different kinds of cells. The reason we have different proteins is we express different genes. Every, remember, every cell has exactly the same DNA except for a few kinds of cells in your body. Which genes on that DNA are expressed makes a huge difference about what kind of cell you are, what structures you have. So let's review cell differentiation very quickly. Different cells need different proteins. DNA in every cell is exactly the same. The genes that are expressed are what makes the cells different. Different genes expressed, different cells. A gene is part of the DNA strand. It's a place on a particular chromosome. Genes are a section of a DNA on a chromosome that controls the making of a specific protein. There are also other kinds of genes, but we're just going to talk about the kinds that make protein. Just like on a parking lot, there are particular parking spots. On, gene, on chromosomes, there are genes. It's a, 
specific place on a chromosome. When we look at those specific parking spots, we can see exactly what's going on there. You know exactly where each spot is, so you're able to find a particular gene. So when your body needs to express a particular protein, it can look in a specific spot and figure out how to make that specific protein. Just like you look for your car in the parking lot, the protein production team finds the specific gene and goes to work. Let's remember where genes are found. Are they found in the nucleus? Are they found in RNA? Are they found in chromosomes, vacuoles, or E? Both A and C incorrect. Since genes, as you see here, are found on chromosomes, and those chromosomes are found in the nucleus, both A and C are correct. Remember, genes are made out of this stuff. This stuff is DNA. So if you guessed C, DNA, you were correct. Now let's talk about a group of specialized cells all working together. A tissue is a group of cells such as muscle cells working together to form a specific function. So if you have a group of specialized cells that are all the same and they're all working together, that's called a tissue. Muscle cells form tissues. There are lots of different kinds of tissues in your body, but this is an example, just one example. Multicellular organisms consist of many types of cells working together. Why are they so incredibly complex? Well, Many different kinds of cells mean many different things can go wrong. Cells have many parts. Cells make tissues, tissues makes organs, organs make organ systems. So you've got a lot of levels of organizations to deal with. To deal with. And many different cells have to all communicate. So if you can think of a family with many different people and they all have to communicate their needs, the same goes when you have an organism with many different kinds of cells. So all of the above are true. Organ multicellular organisms are complex because they have many different kinds of cells. Those cells have many levels of organizations, tissues, organs, organ systems, make up the organism, and they all have to communicate. Structure and function are interrelated in a specialized cell. How can you tell the nerve cell from the stem cell? Well, nerve cell has hair-like axons communicating with other nerve cells. Nerve cells are not elongated and closely connected. That would be a muscle cell. Nerve cells don't have vesicle, have a lot of, well, they do have vesicles. Um, I would say no, your nose cells probably have the most vesicles. Nerve cells can't photosynthesize. So A, this structure of the nerve cell, the way it's built relates to its function, which is communication. So it's you can imagine lots of wires connecting it to other things like when you plug things into your laptop computer. So they can communicate. Cell cell specialization um, results in structures that reflect the function, that are related to the function. So you can see the fat cells here. Their job is to just hold stuff to store. So the nu they're so full of fat that the nucleus gets pushed over to one side. And I believe the tumor cells are over here. They're growing very quickly. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Go take your quizzes. Remember, you, you're now ready to take quiz 3.22 on mitosis, quiz 3.25 on cell specialization, and 3.27 on differentiation. Thanks so much.